Hello, my name is Matt Lewis and I'm a corporate partner here in the energy team at Osborne Clark. Uh, if you're not familiar with Osborne Clark, we're an international law firm. We've got offices in 25 locations across Europe, Asia and the US. Uh, we provide our services to our clients through various sectors and two of the key sectors are uh, energy and financial services. And so I'm very happy today to be talking to uh, Carly McGee and Charlie Wright from Foresight Group, who operate in the energy and financial services sectors. And we're going to be talking today about current trends in the renewable energy sector. So, Carly, what are the key trends in the renewable energy sector? Thanks, Matt. Um, so three key trends we're, we're seeing in the renewable energy sector in Europe right now are you know, definitely increased competition, uh, which is having a downward pressure on returns. Um, this is caused by you know, more capital looking to, to invest in, in the market. Linked to um, uh, return pressure is uh, investors taking uh, a more aggressive view on pricing assumptions. So one example here is the move from a 20-year asset life to 30-year asset life for wind and solar assets, and that's now become the norm. Uh, another kind of key trend and, and exciting area of development is unsubsidized projects. Uh, and what we've seen is the cost of building renewable energy projects has come down to such a level that subsidies aren't required. And those projects are supported um, either by corporate or um, utility PPAs, but also seeing you know, projects going ahead on a fully merchant basis. And I, th and I think one of the key trends underpinning a lot of that is, is um, the movement in some of the core markets, including Germany, the UK and, and France and Ireland, is the move from a background and history of a fee-in tariff and very high level of subsidies to, to auction processes uh, and, and, and subsidy-free projects without any uh, underpinning support. And one of the impacts that has had as the market adjusts is a large slowdown in greenfield development in some of those core markets. Uh, and obviously that, has, that, that, all, that creates pressure in itself on, on pricing as well. Um, as Greenfield slows down, there is only a finite um, number of, of, of operating projects with a lot of, a lot of investors uh, looking to deploy capital into the sector. Mm -hmm. um, so that is also having a, a, a pressure on pricing. Um, but we do think this is only a temporary lull uh, in Greenfield development. Um, and as the market adjusts to this, to this new reality uh, of subsidy free um, and uh, constraints on development set by government auction processes, um, renewable, uh, renewable greenfield activity will pick up um, given, the, given the wider context uh, of, of, of European targets um, for climate change um, and, and, the growing social, uh, and economic, uh, the growing social and political pressure um, on, on reaching those targets. So how is this adjusting market different in different geographies? Well, I think, yeah, it, it, is, it is different depending on the jurisdiction. Um, for example, if you look at Northern Europe and particularly the Nordics, they have essentially been subsidy free for a few years now. Um, and that is driven by, by, by some unique characteristics, for example, very high, very high wind resource, and particularly in Norway and Sweden, um, a lack of constraint when it comes to space, uh, which means that very large projects can be developed, uh, which drives down the levelised cost of energy. So subsidy free is very much a reality there. Um, in countries such as uh, Germany and France, subsidy free, particularly in the context of wind, will take a little bit longer because there are more restraints there and wind speeds aren't as high. Um, on this, and on the solar side, again, looking at Southern Europe, particularly Spain and Italy, um, subsidy-free subsidy solar is also very much a reality because of the high levels of solar generation. Mm. So it's, it's a change in landscape, it's different to what you've been used to as an investor over uh, the last few years. What are you focusing on now specifically as a firm? Yeah, so I suppose Foresight operates and, and is focusing kind of across the energy infrastructure spectrum. So we're still you know, very much focused on renewable energy generation, but also the flexible generation as well. So looking at battery storage, reserve power, those technologies that are required to, to support the rollout of renewables and the intermittency of generation that brings. Uh, and also looking at transmission and interconnection as well. So how you connect all of these new, new projects to the grid. Um, in terms of geographies, uh, focused on Europe and Australia at the moment. 
Um, and you know, we've already touched upon this, but a, but a really exciting area that we are spending a lot of time and focus on is unsubsidized projects. So we're already actively investing in Southern Europe in unsubsidized solar, and we've committed a lot of time to, to looking at uh, Nordic unsubsidized wind as well. What's the secret to making an unsubsidized solar project work in the UK? UK, so I think, I think it's coming. Um, it, it will get there um, in the end. Uh, we think it's still a, a little way away. It, it is a factor of where are power prices or PPA pricing and what's the cost of building these projects. So at scale, um, mm. you're, you're going to be a lot closer to making those projects work. Mm. Good. Uh, and what are the key challenges for Korean investors in competitive process? You've talked about the secondary market in particular being very competitive. What are the key challenges for, for Korean investors in those processes, Charlie? Yes, I think there's definitely um, some challenges uh, that are unique to international investors coming into a competitive process. Um, you know, I think in these processes there is a wide range of of, of, of sellers and developers. On the one hand, you, you know, there, there are international uh, and experienced fund managers who are exiting from projects, but also there are small to medium-sized developers um, coming to market for the first time. And so, particularly for those small to, to medium-sized developers, dealing with international investors can be a bit of a leap into the unknown. And so therefore, it's very important for any international investor coming into that process to be able to demonstrate to the seller that they a high degree of, of transaction certainty, that they're able to deliver a successful outcome quickly and efficiently to the seller, um, but also funding certainty, that they can, that they can really sh demonstrate to the seller that they have the funding capacity to complete the transaction with them. And I think the other key challenge um, for any investor in a competitive process is retaining flexibility. Um, many of these competitive processes that we're now seeing are, uh, involve multiple parties all the way up to, to even final signature on the SPA. And so being able to retain the flexibility throughout the entire transaction life um, in regard to valuation, uh, in regard to key commercial terms, whatever they may be, is very important so that you can react to the process as it develops. Yeah, and I think you know, in terms of you know, large operational portfolios, we are definitely seeing a lot more competition for those. I think if you're able to uh, invest earlier in those projects, so taking construction risk um, and potentially getting involved slightly earlier than that, then you can remove some of that, that competition. I think also as um, we see more unsubsidized projects, being able to take a little bit more of a flexible view around merchant risk will also mean that you're, you're ahead of the competition. And I think one thing we do focus on as a firm is trying to target those opportunities outside of competitive processes. Mm. Um, you know, we, we, given, our, given our experience, we obviously have well and long established relationships with, with many market participants, um, key developers, advisors trying to target those opportunities where ex exclusivity can be secured earlier, mm. which means that any investor will be therefore taking on less transaction risk mm. without the need to incur material third-party costs mm. while still in a competitive process with other bidders. Thanks, Charlie. Thanks, Carly. Um, we will put our contact details at the end of this video. Should you need any further information from Osborne Clark or Foresight, please get in touch. Thank you.